of the Durban Homestanding Channel. If today is your first time visiting with us, we want to invite you to watch any of our 520 episodes that we've arranged in playlists for your convenience, as we are confident you're going to find something both useful and entertaining to watch. If you have been here before but you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. So here we are in our newly renovated laundry area and we have a few more items that we would like to keep out of the counter so the counter is nice and clean and looks nice all the time and when we're looking around we could put them in the cabinets of course but we also notice there is a nice space <coughs> between our two machines the laundry and the dryer right mm -hmm. so our thought is to create a sliding what we're going to call it cabinet yeah it's a storage um caddy or storage shelf storage cart a storage cart that will fit between here and will stain it the same color as the counter and it should make a nice good match so that's what we're going to build today stick around and we're going to show you how we did it in the shop and we have our uh, front piece almost ready to to stain and as you can see the piece that we wanted the, the wood we wanted only comes in three feet length in our store but we needed a longer length right so we combine two boards and as you can see here we have a pretty good uh, uh, what do you call it joint uh, and the way we did that to achieve a, a nice joint is that we cut small pieces from either of the two boards in 45s mm -hmm. and then when you do that as you can see you have a, a much better joint and you might need to put a little bit of putty but overall it's a better, better joint and you have two joints of course if you don't like one side you can put it on the other mm -hmm. okay. now how strong is this this is the joint on glue only right there is nothing else and you can see it totally supports itself right yeah so it is a strong joint but in the in the back will also have uh, structural elements so this joint is absolutely secure it's not going to go anywhere yeah. and it does um, it does kind of disappear um, you can see that the grain doesn't obviously exactly match up they're two different boards but you can't really see the seam otherwise and it will be on the bottom part so after we stain it it will be invisible or so we hope right right so all right i just wanted to show you this and now we're going to move on so this is our first cut for the project and this is the most critical cut because we don't have material to do it again right if we, if we make a mistake we made a mistake so we carefully measure and uh, made the mark make it okay we are unplugged dry fit of the frame we are here that would be eventually the front right that's what we're filming this is the back side of the front the back side of the front yes and we're going to have to make another frame like this and then a similar frame of different dimensions to create the, the depth right does it make sense yeah all right so let's uh, start with the assembly we're going to use brads and uh, glue to connect this okay all right so we're set up for our uh, first assembly and we are going to, we've measured it, this is the right dimension and we are going to be glue, put glue on both sides of the little piece Where is the other piece? Uh, I don't know We'll put no, it there temporarily no, that's a scrap Oh, where is the other piece? It was there so Do you want to do the honors? You can do it. So we're set up with clamps. We've put glue on the joint. And we have the clamps here to have a, a, a tight joint.
Alright, so we need to do the same on the other side now. We're going to use the same setting as we did before. Again, we repeat the same process. Okay, let's clamp it. Press a little more. Okay. Put your finger here. The same problem. Wait, wait, leave that one. More. Okay. Um, can I have that flat to wipe So what we're doing once again, we're using the existing cut piece to make sure all of the other pieces are the same dimension and the reason we're doing that is because even if our first piece is a little bit wrong in dimension consistency is more important by following the same piece it will always be consistent does that make sense? Yep. and that is more important than be the exact length that one is not long enough. So okay. Piece. All right, so we're going to cut at least four of those. More actually, but at least four. And we're going to use the same process. And the saw always leaves a little bit of uh, fuzz. That's what I call it. I don't know what is the technical term. Fringe. And we're going to have to hit that with a little bit of a uh, sanding block. And as soon as we finish with our cuts, we'll be right back with you. So we're already starting on the second one and because we have a, a slight bow on this we are using the first one we made to make sure that this is flush. Does that make sense? Because that wanted to lift a little bit. And we are going to use a clamp again to compress it. And now we are going to... We already have put glue, right Elpida? Yeah. You can see it coming Are out. you pressing? Yeah. Our lone battery or we? Well, it's flashing at you. Yeah, the flashing is error. Why are you? No, we're out of battery. <laughs> so. And we did that one, right? Mm -hmm. All right, where is no, the Dremel? You need to do another one. Oh, I thought we you did one. You ran out of battery. All right. So here we are, we're making sure that our uh, device here is square and we're using our, what's becoming a favorite tool of ours, the little red clamps, right? Mm -hmm. They're 90 degree corner clamps, right? Right. All right can you tighten them? So we put glue now? Yeah, we, we have right. glue, we don't have the brad yet. Right. And the clamps will keep it in alignment. It takes a little coordination to adjust each side so that it's tight and keeps it at the right angle. But it makes sure that it doesn't move as we uh, use the brad nails, mm -hmm. which is the important aspect of this. And as you can see, I don't know if you can take this, we start having a, a frame now. Mm -hmm. Nate, none of this is visible. You want to do it? Here. So none of this is visible, as I said before. We're going to repeat on the other side and we're going to show it to you. Alright friends, and here we are. The major structural part, also known as the carcass, is completed. We are square within uh, 
the abilities of the board to stay square. The boards were inexpensive boards, and they had a little bit of bow on them, but still, I think would look pretty darn square, don't you think? Yeah, looks good. Really good. By the way, you can use the same process with bigger lumber and make a bed, or a cabinet, or I mean, it's the same process, right? Mm -hmm. As we keep saying, you learn to learn box, you learn to make boxes, you learn how to woodwork. I need to clean it. So here we are. We have the, the carcass on the floor and we're going to apply copious amount of glue and we're going to put the top, what we're going to call that? The top surface on? Face plate. No, the face plate is there. Top plate. And then we have a, a little bit of uh, what we call a wiggle room because the board, the, these pieces were not perfectly straight. So we're going to attach the front and align everything using that piece that we know it's perfectly straight, right? Yeah, you don't need to do that. We found that it makes no difference. But makes our fingers <laughs> sticky. We did an sticky experiment. Sticky fingers. You know, and you can talk fingers. that we put that if you want, you know, that we put the front oh, part. Yeah, so we use this cutoff piece just to help us with our spacing. We've got it clamped in space so that we in place so that we can then align these well, if you want to, to hit the brad nails, you want me to hold it? Is it perfect there? Make it further, I'll hold it, and you tuck it. Are you happy with that alignment? Yeah. Okay, do one corner first. Double check. You need to put a little angle towards the back. Okay. Now fire. Trying not to get in the seam there. Okay, make sure that we are correct now because we can still move it and align it if we need to. This needs to pack up just the hair. Okay, now I'm going to align it here. It's perfect here. Okay. All right, let's do more now. Um, what? We, we have one inch, go ahead. We have one inch brads. Make sure we're not gonna go through. Even if we go through. Can you press this? It looks a little bit out. You see, it's a little bold. Mm -hmm. Just don't be close to the gun. Okay. Oh, you want me to do it? So this log will be very minimally visibly visible. Do you want to put wood putty on the brad nail? No. So here we are continuing the build. This is a f essentially will be our bottom shelf, right? Mm -hmm. So we have attached it. We did use the clamp. Again, the boards that we're using are not uh, uh, furniture grade, so they are, they are not perfect. They have a little bit of a bow, but you can get rid of it fairly easily. All we did was put the clamp there and clamp it. So as you can see now, it has a very nice flush. So the floorboard here aligns exactly with the frame because we squeezed everything together. And we decided, what well, we had two more shelves, one here and one here? Yeah, two shelves. Again, that, that has to be built to, to fit your need. Mm -hmm. We think that two shelves will be plenty for us. So that's what we're going to go on. We're going to show you any steps that are different. But now we're going to go on and continue the design. So for our two selves, we need four supports and we cut those in our uh, saw. I forgot the name of the saw. <laughs> so we are ready here and we are going to, again, we have our own dimensions based on what? How did you decide, Mrs. Wizard? Well, 
the first one is like what do I want to put on these shelves so mm -hmm. how high are the bottles and different things and products I'm going to store and the second is you know how high between the floor and our countertop right so in other words the your needs will dictate the dimension, right? And that's the cool thing about making something for your space and for your needs. You don't have to buy something off the shelf and try to modify it. You make it exactly as you want it. So we're going to, to make those marks and we're going to tell you what we do next. And Stick we're going on. to paste paint the head of those screws so everything will match. So we're going to do that now. And all these are preparation steps for the assembly. Okay, we want to give this time to dry before we... And again, one of the cool things about painting is how it immediately transforms something. And while this is drying, we are going to, to be working on other aspects of the project. Are you satisfied? Are you, is that good? Or you want yeah. more? Okay. All right. Good. We'll be right So here back. we are. We have made marks which for us are 14 inches and one of the easiest way to make sure that you are level is to draw lines like this. See, I'm using my square and as you can see we are there and you have this edge up against that right so I'm square if I'm square I'm level does that make sense? Mm -hmm. and we will do the same on the other side and then we're going to attach the self so we'll be right with you so here we are, we're using our red uh, clamps, which we, we really love in, in, in this stage and age, right? And we use the, the system I, we just showed you using our square. And as you can see, we are perfectly level, right? Right on the dot. So you, we, we saw that to you so you can see it. But if you, if you are careful, this is a very secure way to make connections because we know this, because of the clamps, is a perfect 90 degree angle. So we're going to set up, we're going to use the same thing, we're going to use wood glue and brad nails for this. Uh, we're not going to expect huge loads, right, Mrs. Wizard? No. If you want to put something really heavy, you might want to go with screws here. But for our case, glue and brad nails will be uh, sufficient. So we're going to get there and we're going to show you the next step. So this is the same process, but we want to take a, a couple of seconds to show you that because one of our boards was a little bowed, we did not have a very tight connection in one of our joints. So we use a clamp to bring them together and you can see now both joints are very nice and tight, right? Yep. So again, everything else is the same. That's why we don't show it to you. And the only difficulty that causes is that in order for us to use our uh, nail gun, we have to go from that direction because it doesn't fit here, right? So we're going to be sideways and, but we're going to use two uh, brad nails again. We already have put glue. And that's why you need a lot of clamps in your shop. Because you never know when you use them, right? So Especially a variety of sizes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to finish that, put in the same way uh, a self. And then we're going to do the last self. Then we need to put the wheels on. Mm -hmm. And last we're going to put the face because the face is longer than that length, right? So mm -hmm. we don't want to damage it. And then we hope it fits. So here we are, we're ready to unclamp this support. And remember, because we had the bow here, actually that was the side we had the bow, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a little bit of a space here. I think that the brad nails are, are strong enough to keep it closed, but if they are not, we're going to have to mediate, right? So we're going to take them off now and see if And it seems like it is holding, right? Yeah. So we don't have to be... Now, if, if this was opening up, what we would have to do is go with the screw. Because the screw has much more tensile strength, right? Okay. But in our case, we are fine. Well, the other, we didn't have a concern on the other one. And we so can now still we're getting ready to attach the screws at the bottom. And one of the things we need to be careful is that the, they are parallel. Otherwise, they will not track straight. I think so. What do you think? This has to be parallel to the edge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Looks good. All right. Over your finger. Sorry. 
And this is an instance actually you do not necessarily want the... I lost my train of thought. This is an instance that... What is an instance of? Remove that finger please. This is an instance of something I don't remember. Okay, let me get the longer. Where is the red little? You know my long screw things. Long screw. Yeah, this is the technical term. You mean the drill bit? Yeah. These kind of suck. They all tear up easy. I know, but they're long, and they are the wrong thing. What did I do? Oh, yeah, that's the right thing. I saw like the other style. You know? Uh -huh. The quick release is nice. Yeah. Is it lined up? Alright. Where's the other one? Here it is. Found it. So you did the diagonals first? Yes. To keep it in place. Because now it cannot move, so all we did now is adding strength with more screws. You mean my, my arm is not transparent? Yeah, your, your, your charm. Your arm? Charm. Yeah. Charm is getting, getting a charm. lot of action charm, here. Charm, huh? So we're going to do that in order for all four screws and we'll get back with you. All four screws or all four wheels? All four wheels and all four screws. Hello friends, and here we are in, in the kitchen for a final, uh, would we call that dry fit or fit? Well, it's a fit because we're done, except well, we're not, finish. We're not quite done, we don't have the sides and we don't have the finish. But we are, the, dimensionally this will not change, right? Mm -hmm. So here it is. And the idea is that we can push it back. And when we're going to finish it the same way as this, it will look a, a very seamless uh, process, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into the final touches. We're going to show you how we do that. And hopefully we'll take a clip when we're totally done and it is in its place. So we're going to make the, the bumps, what we're going to call them? Rails. Rails? I don't know. We're going to, to create a, a device to keep whatever we have in place when we move the self, right? Mm -hmm. So we're back in the shop and we have the last piece of construction to complete and that is to put some guards as we said to prevent the whatever we store here to, from falling. <coughs> to do that we found some scrap plywood we had and we cut it into about an inch width, right? Mm -hmm. And we are going to attach it to the appropriate height using little pieces of wood again we cut from a scrap piece to create a, a more secure uh, connection. So we're going to do that and I'll be right back with you. <coughs> okay, we need to make it. Okay. Okay. Now you need to shoot a, a staple from outside to this. Alright, so what we're doing, we created the spacer using a a two by three, which means this is a two and a half inch distance from the bottom. And now, as we show you, we made uh, several of these little uh, appliances. What we have the widgets. The widgets. <coughs> Do you want to hit the second one so it doesn't rotate anymore? Okay, good. We're going to do the same on the other side, and we're going to put another one. Oh yeah, spacer. this is the width of our uh, guard, so we want it to be flush, so we're using it here 
to be flush, right? Okay, good. Okay, we need the other part. With our braces set, we're putting glue again, like we've done before, and we're putting our plywood pieces that we have set for our guards, and we decided to do it with the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. And that serves both to, this is too long, we need to change. This is too long, we need half an inch or... Technically, if you have time to wait, the glue is plenty for this. Mm -hmm. But for us, that we are impatient, right? The glue is not enough. So we're going to do it this way. Okay, get towards the meaty part. Okay, this is plenty strong. All right, we're going to do the rest of them the same way and we'll get back with you. So here we are. We have finished with the rails, that's what I'm calling them. That will protect our, uh, whatever we store here from tipping. And now we're ready for the finishing, which in our case will be staying to match the uh, counter that we have on, on top of the washer and dryer. And then, we're going to add a handle, so it will be easier to pull in and out of position. And then what is only left is to fill it up with stuff, right? Yep. So stick around for the last steps. We're almost the home stretch, guys. And the last stage, of course, is the staining. Uh, Mrs. Wizard decided she wants to stain the whole piece. This is a matter of preference, of course. You can only stain the visible surfaces when it is closed. Uh, since most of its time it will spend closed, right? Yeah. But there is no right or wrong way. This is a preference that it is a matter of taste, right? Right. We are using, as you can see, the same stain we use for the countertop above the washer and dryer and that will match. So when it is in the closed position, the hope is that it will just blend with everything, right? Right. So this will take a little bit of time, but when we are done, we will show it to you. And we are confident you will love it. Don't you agree, love? I'm going to love it. You're going to love it? Yeah. So with the stain finished, the last step is to uh, attach the handle. I'm going to bring the drill. And this will simply make it simpler for us to take it in and out. And we were lucky enough, we found in our, our local uh, big store a handle that matched all the handles we have in the kitchen and the 
yeah. improvement here in the laundry room. Well, similar anyway. Since we use the spray to make the screws also the same color as the handle, we're not using a power drill to attach it, but we... So here is a complete lit, complete lit, lit. The completed uh, project. As you can see, it came out the way we just wanted it, and we are uh, very pleased with it. Anything we would have changed? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, I'll do that. Alright, so we're going to put it now in its place so you can see how it operates. That's how you want it? Mm -hmm. And this is the finished project. All right, fine. So we're going to do the last parts and we are going to get right back with you. So here we are, we put a few items on and I'm sure that they will multiply, right? Mm -hmm. We are not sponsored by OxyClean. We just happen to have a lot of it at the moment. But you can see it's a very nice and functional uh, device. And then it goes out of the way, really matching our counter. And you can see our uh, little handle matches everything and brings everything together in a very nice way. All right, friends, and we're at the end of this episode. Ooh. And here is our finished project. And this was a request of Mrs. Wizard. So what are your thoughts, Mrs. Wizard? Yeah, very functional. It takes, you know, um, a little thinking and planning and measuring, but it's definitely an add to the space because it uses up uh, and, and provides a storage for things that otherwise would be always up and down in the cabinets. And our cost for this project, uh, including the uh, pool here, is $25. We did use some scraps that we had in the shop, but even if we were to buy everything, it would be probably another 4 or $5, not much. So we're doing about a $25 uh, project, which I'm not sure, can you buy something like this? And if you can, can you fit it in your space? Yeah, that's the real key, is to have something that fits and matches what you've already got. We do hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, we would love a thumbs up. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Share, like, subscribe, let us know what else you would like to see in the channel. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, and Alpida, and of course the Urban Home Studying Channel, farewell friends, stay safe, wash your hands, put your masks on, and we're going to see you soon.